Good evening and welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Backstage Pass. I am your host, Vince Edwards. You may know me from Sound Image Productions. I also have a couple closed roadie groups on Facebook, one called Death by Loadout and another called The Backstage Pass. Come check us out. We're getting up to some silly over there this evening. First of all, I'd like to say that my, my normal co-host, uh, Kyle Thomas, has went off yesterday to Atlanta to do uh, uh, rehearsals with John Legend on a tour we just stuck him on. He's a good fit for that, so we will miss him. And, you know, we, we appreciate that he's out doing what he really actually does for a living. So thank you, Kyle. I hope you're having fun out there this evening. We have been very lucky to be guest host extraordinaire, one of my favorite people. Now, you guys, if you've watched the show, you know this is one of my bestest friends in the whole wide world. I don't say that lightly. I've got the one and only loudspeaker design legend in the house with us to co-host this show, the one and only Bernie Broderick. Yo. Bernie Broderick, how yeah. are you tonight, my yo, love? Yo, yo. I'm good, man. I, you know, I can always, pre-show when we're chatting and just, you can, I could feel like the energy kind of building <laughs> up and it's like, okay, we're almost there. It's and, almost you volcanic. Know, it's all good, baby. <laughs> no, I'm good, man. I've been chatting with some people here before the for the show. I got I got the thing going here. Um, folks, I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to keep looking over here. But, yeah, no, no, you that's know, your deal. That's, it's all that's new to me, people's. you know. Not chat, but. I understand. No, 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 no. I love. See, I like the chat part of this, and it's fun. a nice interactive back and forth with the peoples. And and these are the appointment TV guys that come to it live. You know, a lot of folks come to this show after the fact, which is why it's out on the three different. We got it on Twitch, Facebook Live, and YouTube. And p different folks at different times come to different places. But we got people in Ian Peacock that's uh, you know over in the UK. Mm -hmm. He stays up till three in the morning to watch this with us. I was a couple weeks ago. I was with you actually. Yeah. Remember, and I said I almost phoned this thing in. I almost just put a rerun on. And I thought. <laughs> If, no, if no. Ian, Ian Peacock can stay up till three in the morning, a badass from the UK, a true yep. brother, yep. I can come in and do this damn show. So, no, I, I love it, and I, I appreciate you doing the interaction with them. You know, the funny thing is I got that big-ass TV editor because, you know, Big Daddy's blind. You know, I can't see a goddamn thing. Try taking the shades off. <laughs> Why don't we start no, with that? That's even worse. That's even worse. And you know, you go from can barely see to can't see at all. And and, and of course today the LDs, uh, we've been pulling uh, from this big rig in here. We've been pulling lights in and out as it relates to the needs of outside world and shows. And uh, last week they had pulled most of the shows off the off the truss, uh, most of the fixtures off the truss. And this week they have put some back on. And they are brutal, and I appreciate them for that. So I hear next week we're going to be on flashlights. <laughs> Could be like three guys standing there with, you know, you're with from your lips to God's lights. ears because that means I got enough shows to take up all these fixtures. So there you I, go. I can't. I will not bitch about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm in the business of business. Well, and speaking of the speaking of the chat, you know, I'm hoping that that Nigerian prince is going to show up because because I've been chatting back and forth with him. I think we're almost we've almost got a deal going on here. So I'm waiting to see if he pops in so we can have a little sidebar. Well, you know, I hear all you got to do is send him a few thousand dollars and he will help you get to millions of dollars. So That's it. You should really check I'm already that. past that. It's I'm called an that. investment, Bernie. I've already done that. It's called an investment. So. I just wanted to make sure you got all my, my personal information. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to, you know, mother's maiden name, social security number, all the good stuff, yeah. your dog, your first dog's name, mm -hmm. all that stuff. All, it's it's very, it's a good plan. It's a good thing. It was uh, weird sending somebody all, all my passwords, but. <laughs> but you did it. We're good. We're good. We're solid, he and I. <laughs> I've always said you were the most clever amongst us, Bern. I know. I wanted to say a little shout-out. I was looking at this thing here, and I said something last week, but, you know, we got a, a dear friend of ours. He comes to the show, kicks it with us. He's a brother. He's a local 16 IATSE brother, you know, which is 16s here in the Bay Area. And he's, he made these things. He made me this cool-ass lighter. He's just a brother. He that, does, he's, he's dropping all these stu these things on you yeah, all he the just, time. Yeah, it's just cool that way, and yeah. I don't even know what to think about it. You know, I get all this weird shit. I got samurai swords from Japan and all kinds of shit from around the world that people send in here. And it's, what, 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 what are you doing? What the hell was that? Oh, I'm, uh, the, don't the, even start with me, Bernie. The, the mountain <laughs> of these you have. I'm going to wallpaper my wall with these when you're done with them. It's not a bad idea, it's actually. Bad It'd be idea a good look. The more of me around. But I just thought it was very sweet of Pat O'Doul to do this, and I wanted to say thanks one more time to Pat. Oh, Pat, Pat. I, I moved it to my... The only other thing on this key ring is a carabiner and a AL-12 <laughs> pin. It just tells you, you know, the high regard I put this in, because I would not put this on my key ring if I didn't, I didn't feel the love. So I wanted one more quick shout-out to... 
to Pat O'Doul for sending that. He sent well, some stuff into Georgia, you know, my boy, my brother, and Mikey the Octopus, and uh, Kyle Thomas. It was very sweet of him. So That's thank awesome. you, Pat. Yeah, Pat's a cool guy. He, he, I put a post up there on Facebook the other day. He shared it on his on his page and stuff. I thought that was really nice of him to do that. And just a good boy. Yeah, he's yeah, just one of the, He's one of the that's, brothers. That's the sure. real deal. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So what's what, what's been on your mind lately, buddy? What's you thinking about? Uh, um, personally, or do you want me to start reading from the cue card? <laughs> <laughs> so so we're working on uh, Bernie getting the whole like this is a slightly scripted but not really scripted it's thing. Not scripted, really, <laughs> it's just that I, I, yeah. I just have a lot Those of names I can't reminders. pronounce. Reminders. Yeah. Just For example, we would probably want to thank last week's guest who was who was nice enough to. You know, we should do this in a way though, oh. because. Tonight, I had advertised that the great Bobby Schneider would be here. That's right. Um, because, you know, he said he would multiple times. And he's a busy man. That's Metallica's PM. And he's like, everybody. And he's a dear friend. Um, and, you know, he's just a few miles away. But he's busy with some other shit. We have booked him for September 9th. And I had made it, I had missed it wrong because I already had Robert in anyway. So me and you were going to do a show earlier today. Right put it in a can and air it later. Right. So that was the reference. But it, my, 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 my stuff's been a little off balance lately because I've been working my brains out and we've been going right up to the last minute to do this show, so. And everybody too, I mean, you yeah. know, guys are coming in out of work now, you know, our guest tonight, you know, everybody's, everybody's getting their foot back in it again. And, yeah. uh, you know, hopefully it's all gonna, it's all gonna stay going. But, but I mean, I'll go through the cue card. I'll, I'll go through and- uh, Give and, it to me, baby. You know, what do you got on uh, that thing? There, there's important stuff. There's very important stuff on here. So let's thank last week's guest. Yeah, yeah. So, well, so first of all, you know, I wanna send a big shout out to LSV because ah. those guys have been huge. Uh, large screen video. Large screen video. I mean, they've, they've kept us in equipment even though they're, they're full back at it again. That's right. And uh, there was really no obligation beyond, you know, us needing it back. And uh, and they've stepped up and they've they've kept stuff here for us to use all the cameras, switching equipment, everything like that. So um, that's really awesome. And again, last week's guest. Mm -hmm. um, so that Hunter Pipes and. Um, that's great. Yeah, so uh, really wonderful for him to be on the show. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, we, Hunter. Yeah, we want to say a, a quick shout out to the people who, uh, you know, I'm going to get used to now because I'm seeing all these names popping up here. And now I can see that uh, that we got the regulars. Yeah. We call them the regulars the around regulars. here, the regulars. Mm -hmm. um, but awesome followers that we have, Ash Ali, uh, Sue Kearney, uh, Charlie Zarecki, Scott Perlman, Jackie Cantibury. That's my girl. I, I think I know her. I love of my I life. Think, I think I know her. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and and I can't pronounce this name. Gyro? 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 So that's a friend of ours from, I, I don't want to be wrong here. I want to say Portugal or- JLS Audio? Uh, JLS Audio out of, uh, it's, uh, it's Gyro, I believe, but I could be wrong. Gyro? Or, or Brazil. And he, he rings me up every so often. And um, I just want to say, you know, right on Brazil, Portugal, I'm, I'm probably getting this wrong. It's one or the other. But we appreciate you guys reaching out and checking us out from out there. So forgive us. Yeah, yeah forgive us for not, you know, being able to read, but we try our best. And uh, we wanted to, to take a, a, a quick pause and send a big shout out to the big, the big dog of the big dogs. The other, uh, the other Hawaiian shirt wearing Remember we used MF. to do this when me and you started this show. Me and Bernie started this show, many of you may know. And we did it, but, and we'd always be really careful to, yeah. when we started this show to send out to Big Daddy, which of course is the one and only founder of Sound Image, Dave Shadone. He is, he is, our, he is our potter, he is my rabbi, he's, he's the man. And uh, we just simply couldn't do it without him, without his uh, largesse and his, uh, it just, he's just a great man. And we really, you know, I, I feel honored to be able to work here and work under his, his tutelage and uh, the same with Ralph Wagner and some of the other guys, Mike Spragu, just we, we, uh, Rob Mailman. We've got a really incredible team here. Yeah. And I just wanted to send a shout out to Dave yeah. and say, thank you, boss. Thank you for allowing us to do this. And, you know, let us uh, trust in us to, to carry the torch and, you know, um, and do it right. And so we try to be, to honor that and be careful careful with, with the, the thing that he's created because it's an incredible thing and we pretty feel very privileged. He, he actually at a dinner got me to eat escargot <laughs> and I don't know how he did it and, and it was a very clever, it was, it was, I swear to God man it was psychology. Yeah. That man pulled psychology on me and a buddy of mine at the dinner table. He got us both to eat it and there, there are a lot of things I would eat before I'd eat escargot. Yeah, yeah. But he did it. He got me to eat it and he said so how was it? I said 
I'll, I'll probably never order it. Yeah. But at least I know that if I'm sitting at a table with a couple of big dogs like yourself, yeah. and, and it comes out, I'm not gonna like run under the under the table when it comes. It's not as bad as you it's imagine. Not as it's bad a little as you rubbery. Imagine. It's weird. It's got a strange texture. But yeah, yeah. But you know that is the key to his magic is that he's a psychological operator. He is psychological he can get warfare. Get in anybody's man. head and yeah. make things happen. I yeah. mean, that's just how do you you know? He was like, he was like he was like I know exactly what you're thinking. He's like, I know exactly <laughs> what you're thinking, and he went through this magic. whole kind of thing where basically every question I had asked myself yeah. as I'm looking at this, he's already answered it yeah, before I've asked it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he's yeah. fantastic. He's, he's uh, magic. Then we got uh, Jorge Eduardo. Jorge Eduardo is a uh, you know a dear friend, um, and uh, he sponsors this show and it lets us get things done. So just for you people out there, I'm not sure I'm supposed to let the cat out the bag. Jorge Eduardo is George Edwards, my brother. Oh, <laughs> 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 you had me. You had show, me. In the show, he calls himself Jorge Aguado because he's letting me do my own thing. He's real sweet about it. But um, yes. I, I haven't said or mentioned him in a long time. And then we do a lot of shows here. And, yeah. and I just wanted to send a shout out to my brother. You know, me and my brother have been tooling around doing this shit for a long time together. And it's an alchemy that is not easy for it. Uh, we've seen other brother acts not fare as well as we have. And sure, we've had our ups and downs. But I love that man. He's a damned, he's, a, he's, he's truly one of my best friends, if not my best friend. And uh, couldn't do it without him. And I just wanted to send a shout out to him and just say, you know, much love, brother. You know, thanks for supporting this thing and letting us get away with what we do. And, you know, it's uh, he runs the, his whole place. I kind of work under him. And then everybody kind of works under us, and and without him, uh, without that direction, and without that uh, that special sauce that he brings to the table, we wouldn't be the same. So just wanted to send a shout out to him. Yeah, and he reminded me, and we'll mention this again in a second out at Oxbow. What uh, what a dedicated, hardworking person he is. I mean, he's just he's just a no quit individual man, all day, nonstop, just just go go go. He's kind of a Tasmanian mm -hmm. when he gets out on shows. You know, it's not something we do much anymore in our age, and and we've got other responsibilities. But man, when he goes out on a show, you you better be doing your shit. Because, Bring your A game, yeah. Because he, he he can work as hard as any two people yeah. can put on yeah, a show. And I'm not kidding. You, yeah. It sounds silly, right? He's a 57 year old man. Wrong. Now he will come. He'll load a truck faster. He'll do anything. He sees it all. He understands. He can look at a show and understand what's happening, what's not happening, what needs to happen. Yep. It's a magical quality. It's uh, you know somebody who's been doing something for 40 years. You'd think he'd <laughs> you have think that he'd quality. Peter off. Yeah. yeah, but no, no, no man. No, no. He's he's a fire engine. He's incredible. <laughs> and uh, and finally, then we got. John Del Rio. <laughs> Big John Del Rio. You know, accurate staging. He went on to Gallagher. He's a huge supporter. He's him and my brother and Robert Powers, the, the rigging legend, uh, started that Loving Hands for Stage Hands thing. Yep. They saw a need. There was people struggling in our industry. There was some suicides, some things. So they opened up that page on Facebook. I kind of do some moderation there, throw up some stuff, some inspirational shit. You guys need to you know, you're having a bad day, shit's not going your way, whatever, you're just having some stinking thinking, go over to that page. There's some there's some good resources there, there's some caring people, they're all in our industry. It's very carefully monitored and, and uh, moderated, and uh, and it's thanks to John Del Rio, he's really the brains behind it. Rob uh, Rob Powers and the other guys got involved with it, and it, it's a Bobby, we just call him Bob Powers, um, make that happen, and so, you know, <coughs> fucking hats off to him. We love those guys. and. And uh, it's a good thing. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned John. He's a, he's one of our dearest friends, and he, he was a big bear of a man, and it just just a good guy. He provides our uh, disinfectant that we spray around the whole mm -hmm. building to make this place safe, so we can feel safe working in here with all the people that we have come through. And so he's just uh, he's invaluable and a dear friend. Speaking of being safe, I mean, um, you know, our industry is is like a, is like a, a poorly tuned Edsel trying to start up again, uh, to, to to put it to put it mildly, right? Uh, yeah, it's there's some a car guy statement, but yeah, there's some it. sputtering. I yeah. think something climbed into the air cleaner and made a nest. <laughs> but, uh, okay. but we uh, we do have some. We got some. We got some stuff going. We got some stuff yeah. coming. Yes, um, you right. know, obviously, I, as as I mentioned before, the Oxbow stage up in uh, Napa. Mm -hmm. Which is a uh, uh, comes out of this building, Sound Edge Productions uh, wow. is in swing. We got a big stage up there, and uh, you can see photos and stuff. Uh, Billy Idol just played there over the past yeah, weekend. Yeah, it was a great show. Yeah, so uh, there's there's some bumps in the road. I think they had widespread panic supposed to come in. Uh, three days. Yeah, they're going to do three days. The whole band got uh, COVID. Everything so came we had down. To cancel yep. that. So we've got this massive rig out there, this massive stage, and unfortunately, it will be dark this weekend. And so I think we're going to need stuff. to. Yeah, I think we're going to need uh, to get used to this for a little while because yeah. it's not going to be it's not going to be overnight. No. Uh, everything back to normal. We. Uh, 
We saw uh, who else went out. Um, Nine Inch Nails stopped. Yeah. Uh, Stevie Nicks. Yeah. The Pixies. Tony Bennett. Leonard Skinner. I mean, we some bands are just some of them are just preemptively stopping That's and true. saying, "Look, it's not ready yet. We're we're gonna just play it safe here." Uh, others obviously had some infections inside the bands and stuff. But That's right. uh, sad to, to not see those tours out there. But uh, we do have some stuff that is working a little bit around our piece of the earth, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned earlier, Kyle, uh, your your wonderful uh, normal co-host mm -hmm. and I say that from a psychological perspective <laughs> um, he is uh, he's going out with uh, John Legend so we yeah. certainly wish Kyle well and hope he's uh, mm -hmm. he's all good and this thing goes off like a rocket um, and we've got our own uh, audio Jesus mm. that is getting ready to go down this weekend he's gonna work at the West End Festival it's down in San City with uh, with Rick and Lauren um, Rick uh, Rick Allen from Def Leppard and his wonderful wife Lauren yeah who are officially it's officially called Lauren Monroe and the Big Love Band I was wondering you know I didn't I, we've worked when we had him right yep. here in this yep. space we had a big benefit we did with them it was really nice and I just I, I didn't I didn't know it was a big love band it was yeah, yeah. Lauren Monroe yep. Rick Allen and Lauren I, I oh he's know. just a guest yeah well yeah, you know just... and he plays it that way he's a, he's one of our dear friends you, yeah. you're at his house frequently we, mm -hmm. he's here frequently and you know a sweet guy one of the, yeah. the the rare sweet rock stars full full fledged rock stars yeah. that just is hall of famer yeah a hall of famer actually mm -hmm. he voted into the hall of fame with the largest fan vote of any band ever mm -hmm. which is you know something to be proud of Absolutely. but he's truly a, a special guy i but mikey just be forewarned i'm coming down to that thing just to pop in and you know fuck with your world so i'm gonna come down i'm not, I'm not even staying for the show I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> just rolling in yeah as i plugged in you know do my thing kind of go from monitor position out front of the house yeah. walk around sign some autographs get the hell out of there <laughs> sign a few autographs sign get the hell out of dodge autographs uh, they, you know, they would ask me for anything probably a cop to get me to sign something you know <laughs> so i mean you know it's not like i said it's not it's not all perfect but it's not all bad either yeah. we're, we're we're seeing some some stuff happen um uh, certainly, you know, um, it's great to see people. Every time I see a post on social media about somebody out doing a show, it's like this huge sigh of relief. Because yeah. I know they're yeah. feeding their families. I know they're they're getting some bills paid and stuff. And uh, and, and and everybody's playing it safe right now. So um, it's, You're not it's just really good things to see. Well, we mentioned, you know, John Legend, but here in the company, we have quite a few of our... Uh, our uh, we got a lot of touring artists out right now with a lot of our employees, a lot of gear. Yep. But it's too numerous to go into. But, yeah, every so often people jump off the page there. And, yep. you know, like Brad had uh, Stevie Nicks, and then that, that kind of went away, mm -hmm. and Brad Maddox and... And so we, we make the adjustments on the fly. It is the nature of rock and roll in, in this unique time we're living in. It's very unique. Anyways, I'm really glad to have you here. Thank you, my love. You know, appreciate I'm, you. You're going to take care of the kids in the common area? I'm going to go over here and do some comment, and, unless, right. I can, unless I can say something silly and break you up during your interview. Yeah, but, you, uh, would, you would never do that. I would never, never do that. <laughs> I, remember, I remember six or seven shows not being like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I got a rotisserie chicken around or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one quick shout out. I love you, honey. Jackie from Slow Fiber. I'm, I'm totally oh, head over heels with this girl. I just, she, has she responded to any of your emails? No, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she, I'm just hoping at some point she'll, you know, take the hook. But yeah, it's just one of those things. All right, let me get to it, man. We got a big show. I had somebody I've been trying to get on this show for many times. He's been very busy. He, he literally is. This week's guest is, is one of the most sought-after monitor engineers throughout time. He's probably got been in the business over 30 years. He's come and gone a couple times, but he, he can't seem to get away from it. He's worked with such greats as the Pixies to Kiss. His list of uh, accomplishments is very large. Uh, let's see if we can get him to share some stories about some of the times he's been out on the road with some of these, these incredible legends throughout his career. It is the one and only Robert Wilcox. Robert, how are you this evening? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, buddy, it's so nice to have you on the show. We've, you know, I mentioned we we went after you multiple times. It's been a little tricky getting you on board. I know you've been very busy. Where are you sitting at right now? I'm sitting in my hotel room at uh, Hotel Rock Levitz. He's at Rock Levitz. He's yeah. hanging out with the brothers. Yeah. Right on, buddy. And what show are you getting prepared for? Uh, I'm doing Avatar metal band. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Going out for show is uh, September 1st. That should be a lot of through, I don't know, middle of October. We're That's doing pretty solid also blues type venues. Um, a big production for what venues we're playing, but a uh, couple big festivals, Louder and Light, 
aftershock, those things. Yeah, right, right. You're going to kind of take a shoehorn and just wedge it into these facilities. Yeah, the deal? sneak in in the afternoon, you know, get a quick set, then get some dinner and beat feet. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. It's I... going to be fun, though. You know, we're on the same stage, same night with Metallica. Well, that's um, it. And I have some good friends out there, so I'm looking forward to hopefully being able to see them. You know, the way things are, we're uh, we're running a pretty tight bubble. We want to stay out there the whole time, so I don't even know if I'll get to see people, really. Uh, you're going to live on a, on stage left or in a bus, and that'll be about it for a hotel room. So. Sure, sure. Well, we want you to be safe. It's going to be different. It's going to be interesting. I think it, it it and it has proven to be interesting in the last few months over you know with what we're dealing with but uh, there's there's some there's some evidence of a way to do it that seems to work that seems to be uh, relative we got the our, our our brothers and sisters with the foes out right now they're killing it they're cutting across the country and they've had a very little uh you haven't heard any super spreader nonsense or any of that i know the band had a uh, initially had to postpone for a minute because a, a member had gotten sick but they're back on the good foot and so it appears to be doable it's just a matter of precaution and and being logical and so on we wish yeah, you I think, I think you just got to be smart yeah you know yeah you know, and, and be aware of your environment and look out for each other and you'll be fine. Well, you mentioned that you're going to be sharing a stage with Metallica. I know you have some history with them, boys. Uh, you know, that's a hometown favorite here, and we've got a lot of history with them. Did you, uh, I guess you were, did some uh, system tech and monitor tech with those folks before? Yeah, I was the, I was like the M2, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Um, when we were doing Summer Sanitarium, and it was a, a red blue system situation yeah. and a universal crew. And I worked with Paul Owen. Great. You know, yeah, and, he's uh, classic. and we, uh, did every show. Yeah. Uh, it was fun. Yeah. Paul's a badass, true legend in the game. Uh, you know, to say to, to say the least. And, uh, it's a good, uh, good place to, you know, practice your chops for sure. They bring out the big rigs. They don't go any other way, you know? Oh. Yeah, a lot of fun. Let me ask you, so here at the, stro the show, we're, the, the audience and, and ourselves are interested in the origin story. You got a kind of a quick synopsis of how you decided to get into this business? Well, <laughs> you know, I get that asked a lot. And, and I always say, the first thing I say is I got in this business by hanging out with the wrong crowd in high school. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, <in> both. <laughs> I mean, really, I... I you know, I hung out with guys. I always, I went to, I lived, I grew up in Chicago. Mm. So concerts were plentiful. Yes. Um, and I went to all of them. And I had some friends in some bands and kind of hang around with them. And what, I don't play an instrument, not at all. Um, I went to college and in the summer, I took a job as like a helper at a music store by a guy, Gary Gand owned a sound system and he had me go out and help him some of the time i learned how to work a soundboard and quit school pissed my parents off and here i am <laughs> perfect that sounds everything about that origin story is pretty normal except for the one thing that you don't play an instrument. Now, I have almost to the no. man. Yeah. We're, uh, he's a failed musician. I'm a failed musician. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey you know, just accept it. <laughs> when, when I, we all started out with some kind of yeah. ax in our hand or sticks <laughs> or something trying to, you know, make things happen. And finally, at some point, the realization washed over us that maybe, we, maybe we shouldn't be gold, panning for gold. Maybe we should be selling pans to the gold <laughs> diggers <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I never really played an instrument but i will say this this yeah. is kind of funny now um in high school i put speakers all around my bedroom cool like up on top of the dresser we had these my closet door were louvered oh, and i sure. cut holes in some plywood and put speakers on it that i bought at radio shack and mounted them to the inside of the door and then hooked them up to the radio by just going onto the speaker leads. It had to be an impedance nightmare. <laughs> what know? impedance? What impedance? Yeah. I, I can't. <laughs> but, it, I, you know, the funny thing is I never blew up the radio, the, the record player. I never did. 
And, uh, yeah. Well, back in the old days, you know, think about it, though. You try that shit nowadays, you that would be no, no go. That would be no bueno. The old days, you know, the old Morant systems and the whatever, they, those things just, they just want to go. I'm just hearing, yeah. I'm just hearing him say he invented immersive audio. That's what I heard. That's what I'm That's hearing. That's exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You missed I, you your know, calling, yeah. brother. I, I never thought about that. But now that you say that. <laughs> Somebody owes me some royalties. Absolutely. <laughs> bring it. Bring it on. Bring it's it back. The, the daddy yeah. Wilcox. Right? Yeah. Perfect example. That's funny. So, you know, a lot of guys in our industry, and that's who's largely watching us, is, is uh, brothers and sisters in our business, will either haven't or would be unlikely to reach the level. Uh, you know, I think all three of us here have done some pretty big tours, been out with some pretty big bands. And there's there's certain guys in our industry, certain uh, artists in our industry that hit a certain pla that level that are they're not exactly the same as other bands where they kind of rock around in the middle zone. And uh, is there a way that uh, I've been out with uh, ACDC. I know that you have too. ACDC bring one of the biggest shows in rock and roll. There's there's kind of nothing like the machine that is the ACDC machine. Is there any way you could relate to our audience what it's like to be on the touring staff of ACDC, a show like ACDC show? Um, it's a big show, you know. Um, I honestly wasn't there that long. I did a North American leg, and then I didn't go to Europe. Um, I came right from that Metallica tour straight to ACDC, no days off. And looking back on that, it was a dumb idea. <laughs> it really was. No, um, no time I to recharge your batteries. Worn, oh, I came there worn out. Yeah. It was something I always wanted to do sure. and tried to do and never got there. And then got offered it and took it. And it wasn't the right time for me, really, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I enjoyed it. You know, it was loud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was. Uh, they were good. I, you know, yeah. the time I was there, but I, I just wore out. I couldn't. You know, I finally said to the company I was working for at the time, it was doing. I said, I can't go on after this leg. Well, you know, maybe that's a lesson that we should be, that I think we're kind of speaking to is biting off yeah. more than you can chew. I mean, I, I don't know any of us that could have turned down jumping off Metallica, regardless of how charged up the batteries were. To, and, and somebody comes to you and says, what do you think about taking this position with an ACDC North American tour? It'd be very hard to say no to that. It would just, right. it would just yeah. I mean, again, this is one of the seminal rock and roll bands in the world. They bring right. one of the biggest rock shows there is in the game. I mean, when those cannons go off, it's, I'm like, I can look at the hair right now. <laughs> those, well, I mean, you know, it's it, like... It is deafening and exciting, and, and, and you know why you're in the business, but, man, you're not wrong. You need the energy. You yeah. can't you got to go out there, and it's already on the best tour that's going to kick your ass. It, it, you know, it's a big tour. Um, it's all one-nighters, uh, and it was it was tough, and, and I just, it just wasn't the right time. I mean, I, I, what I was going to say was, um, you know, we're starting to run out of these bands that are quote-unquote spectacles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're, it's a spectacle so to go see ACDC. So it's a true. spectacle to go see the Stones. It's a spectacle to go see... Metallica. M Metallica. Def Leppard. Yeah, I yeah. mean, these these bands, I mean, they yeah. just bring everything, yeah. you know? That's what you said, the big guns? Oh, man. I mean, just off the chain. You know, there's tons of bands out there that are amazing musicians and, and write amazing songs, but, man, those guys bring the entire package yeah. and then some. Yeah, the one I'll miss is when it, it inevitably... Uh, runs its course will be the the, the Roger Waters and the uh, the different wall incarnations yeah. because that is talk about spectacle talk right. about right. you know just having all the bells and whistles for anything we can do live and all the different production value but these things are going to come to an inevitable uh, conclusion, conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, even Madge does this with Madonna you know her shows are ridiculous huge and and at some point they're gonna not be doing that anymore and I don't Sitting here right now, and three guys have been around between us, I'd say we probably got a solid 90 years of experience here, probably more than that. Uh, I don't know who's bringing up the rear That's on that. That's what I was going to say. I don't I know who's coming up behind. I, it's hard. You got any idea on that, Rob? Is there somebody you I, see I, out there? You know, you know, you get past the Katy Perry. Yeah, she brings yeah. a bit. You know, Pink. Those are big shows. That's you true. Know, um, I, I've spent the last, I don't know, five, six years as a... Uh, 
Union Steward in Grand Rapids. So I've seen a bunch of these big productions. They're out there. Yeah. Post Malone. Yeah, he surprised the shit you know? out of me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, and true. I'll tell you what, I didn't know what to think of that yeah. until I saw it. And I was impressed. I, I enjoy big production. Yeah, me too. me too. I love that big spectacle. I mean, I've kind of been around some big spectacles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? it appears so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. Post Malone is a, he's a kind of, uh, he's like one of those sleeper cars out on the road. You know, you, yeah. You, yeah. you roll in there with your, you know, F40 Ferrari and this. You little, think it's all good? Little Subaru rolls up next to you, and you're like, you know, rah, rah, and then fucking just the Subaru just bolts off the line. Wait, and what does that Post Malone. He just he does some surprising shit. Well, he showed this at Coachella a couple years back, and uh, I was thinking, how is this guy headlining this thing? You know, and we had Stagecoach right after that, and so you know, it, and and Post Malone comes and just owns the audience. You know, and that's that's uh, one of those kind of natural performer dudes that just has it. He's he's a talented musician. He's got a unique trip he's doing, plus because he does some acting as well. So I've seen him in a couple flicks, and he's such a distinctive-looking guy with the tats and everything. He's just, just yeah. a unique character. So maybe, maybe you know, that's... And you're not wrong about Pink. You're, Pink is a great example. Pink oh. really brings a big show with the high-wire work and all the stuff she does. It's, that's, that's some heavy shit. And she's got the catalog. I mean, that chick's got... She can yeah. sing 30 songs, and you're going to know a little bit of every mm -hmm. one of them. And that's that's a hard thing to do. So, yeah. But hoping you know your words to, to God's ears that that is the future for us, and that there's these things coming up to kind of sort out what is the what is a little bit of a tricky future, as far as I can tell. Now we were talking about our uh, ACDC, but you know I, I was digging around in your resume, and there's an artist that you work with who I absolutely love. I've loved this this guy since I'm a kid. My mom would play this. It's one of those female centric bands that that just the women love this guy. He's got this crazy like stage thing that happens. The audience is kind of interactive with the artist. It's of course the great Tom Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Jones is a singular badass. He's a trippy guy. I'm not sure he might have stayed too long at the party, but. But you know his his catalog has got to reach back for like sixty nine. That's right. It's not unusual, Bernie. Right, that's all I'm gonna say. Can't say his name without hearing that in my it's head. It's not unusual to be loved by you know. So, so what was it like working with the great Tom Jones? And was there a plethora of female undergarments being thrown on the stage as I there remember were. happening? <laughs> there were. Yes. There were. Um, you know, I, I I did it for the sound company, so I was a systems engineer. Mm -hmm. um, I did a couple tours with them, and they were back in the. 80s kind of between things sure um it was uh i enjoyed it you know i i like a variety of things i'm not like i kind of been pigeonholed as an engineer to an area where i spent a lot of time but i enjoy a variety of different things and yeah there are uh, the women thing that was kind of funny yeah you know? yeah yeah <laughs> you know then i was younger Yes. You know, yeah. and, and so, so was he. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. But I was watching at the time older women chasing it, you know, going nuts for him. You know, oh, it was, yeah. it, yeah. It, yeah. we found it funny, I guess. I don't, you know, you know, what's really funny watching Winger sing She's Only 17. That's what's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah. nice. He's in a mood, man. That's a double whammy. Just, just, Bernie, come on. What the hell? Be nice. Yeah. I was right. I was. I was ripping on Saxon a little bit earlier in Mikey's car. I was trying to figure it out. It was like, really? But, but that's not cool. We don't do that on this show. We love Winger and Saxon. We do. Both excellent Favorite band. artists, and they do great things. And so more yeah. power to them. Yeah. Um, yeah I, that, right. What's that, brother? They're out there working. Oh, right yeah, now. yeah, oh, yeah, no. yeah, no, yeah. yeah. And actually, and the reality of it is that quote actually comes from Kip Winger. Yeah, that's that's right. probably not surprising. Yeah. Actually, that's, he says it's yeah. very bizarre to think yeah. she's only seventeen. You know, the fun one for me is Don Dawkins is talking with him about like the past versus the present, and he's pretty he's pretty straight up about it. You know, yeah. Some of the guys they understand where they fit yeah, in music yeah. history, and where their history is now, and what they what they do, and it's their working bands. You know, and they go out and they service their fans, and they do good works, and and so more power to them. Yeah. You know, we love that. Um, you you know, I want to jump over, and sorry I'm bouncing around here, but you know, you have a lot of fascinating things you've been up to in your career. Explain to me. Now, I've worked with this man, and but you know, he's it was always kind of one of those artists you kind of felt like you were working from a distance. You know, he either kind of gave you all of his attention or none. And you might already know where I'm going with this, but this was the great, one of a kind, legendary Prince. You did. You did some kind of. Did you do monitors for his 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 movie Purple Rain? What was your what what I what I uh, yeah that's what I did. Um, that's crazy. That's all man. I've ever really done there. Um, what ended up how that came to be was um, 
Tom Marzullo yeah. was overseeing Prince, Kiss, Cameo at the time. Um, you just took out three and, of my questions. Go ahead. And, 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 yeah. So, uh, you know, I, and I was doing Kiss. Yeah. And, yeah. and what happened was um, Rob Colby, Cubby, who worked at DB with me, they were all DB sound accounts. We all were in Chicago. Right. Um, he got the job, he got hired by Cindy Lauper for her upcoming tour to mix the front of house. Sure. And it overlapped and he couldn't do the Purple Rain stuff. He had been doing Prince and he continued to do Prince. Um, so Kiss had some shows in South America that he could do. So they moved people around and I ended up there. Um, I spent about a month in rehearsals up there and then about a week at First Avenue doing the actual recording part and then they play back and do the filming. Um, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. I mean, you don't want to talk about a genius. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. He he thought of things people didn't think of. And, and, and i give you a great example, and I, I kind of like telling this story. When we were doing The Time, and they were playing in front of an audience, you know, it was wedges and all that, and there were a couple of feedback issues, and I got them to stop, and let's fix this. This is a sound check. And that Prince came up to me and said... Don't get rid of it all. Keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> Raw. Wow. It was like, now who would have thought of that? You know, he wanted that thing to be so real. He didn't want you to and sterilize it. At the end it. of the day, there was, you know, and I was like, I don't want that. And, and so when they were playing that night and stuff would start to feed back, I'd grab it and kind of let it hang a little and pull it down. Yeah. And he came up to me with all excited. That's right. That's right. You know. <laughs> Do you think it was kind of like, you know, a cheap trick live at Budokan? You know, I want you to want me where yeah. the, that's no, there's a notorious squeal in the monitor in the song yeah. that you just no never forget cares. you're waiting for it to happen? Yeah. Well, if you take it out, you're, still, you're, you're anticipating it at that point. That's right, yeah. You know? You're waiting for it. Yeah, it's part of the music. Part of the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's talking about a seminal album, which I know this gentleman also worked for the great cheap trick. Did you not? A lot. I did a lot with them. They're, they were great, yeah. yeah. You didn't do they that were, squeal of feedback, though, did you? No, that's before my time. For that I, I, I have, I have yeah, another live it. album that's got Squeal of Feedback of theirs on, though. Yeah. So I can claim a different one. There's <laughs> Silver. <laughs> There's plenty silver to go around. <laughs> yeah, the, the, well, they did the Silver Anniversary album, and uh, we recorded, we did it in Rockford, a show where they're from, and it was three sets, and they had various people sit in, Slash, Billy Corrigan, um, wow. But they also did a set with all their kids, oh, wow. and and um, they were Robin and his daughter were doing a duet in bed bag. <laughs> <laughs> they fixed it though in Pro Tools. So they I fixed it. They fixed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we were far enough along that you know I could get fixed. You know, actually, my son's in that. Robin's oh, son and my son same age, and they played. Uh, little maracas and a tambourine in the sun. Oh, How old fun. were they? Or, were he was 10. Oh, wow. He that was, was 10. Great. Oh, great history. Great. Well, he's, just... a, he's a lighting guy now. I don't hold that against him. Yeah. He's actually times, on the tour I'm doing. Times are tough. He's on Whoa. this tour. How does that work, yeah. fa father and son working on a tour? Again? It's a, Well, we've done some one-off stuff, and we did a thing. We did a sound image thing together. Um, I did a uh, Clapton Guitar Festival. Oh, mm. wow. And he happened to be with me because of some Reva stuff. And uh, <coughs> they actually put him to work. He was the stage AC guy. No kidding. I would assume that a father doing sound and a son doing lighting is totally okay because you're just going to ignore each other anyway. That's what I would do. Yeah, so yeah. there's there Absolutely. can't be any conflict. Yeah, I get Just that. By, the, by the roles. He is pointing over there. Look at that mom, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. kind of chopping on him from a distance. I totally get <laughs> He's that. He's piecing no. the family right Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's, uh, but, but that you, I'm sure you're very proud. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I'm looking forward to this. It'll be fun. This is the first full tour. I, I think we're going to work again the next summer. We were supposed to a couple summers ago. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, things keep getting pushed back. So I have a tour that keeps getting pushed back. That will happen next summer. Fantastic. Well, and you mentioned working with, you know, the, I mean, 
these guys are legends. It's there's no other way to put it. If you like them or hate them, I personally enjoyed them a great deal since I'm a young man. You know, as part of their their little army, their little rock and roll army. You you did monitors for the great kiss. I mean, what was that like? Is, is this a nice wearing the make you know, the whole yeah. deal. Yeah. Um and then I did it all through the eighties there. Rough and time for them. When what it was. Yeah. And yeah. when there was Still no, well, not the makeup we know today. They still wore makeup, but not the makeup we know today. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? It was like Pro but Tools I, for I, makeup. I, Pro yeah, Tools yeah. for makeup, yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, they did the reunion, and I did, I came back in 2003 yeah. and four, and I did the Kiss Aerosmith thing, oh, and sure. then Kiss some overseas stuff. Um, we're uh, we're still all good friends and talk whenever I see him. I, you know, um, it was interesting. I learned a lot, you know, yeah. um, from those guys. Um, oh. I mean, they're true professionals. Oh yeah, nobody uh, knows the business like the guys in Kiss. Oh, you yeah. know, um, you know, Gene and I had our we had our run-ins. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> and did uh, but uh. He came back to his show and actually apologized to him. After they had done a, gone to the hotel, he came back because I wouldn't take his call. Wow. We got into it. It wasn't pretty, but, uh -huh. you know, and, and he, uh, but uh, he and I, um, we still talk about it and laugh. And, Fantastic. You know. That's what a real friend is. Somebody who knows and, everything you know, about you and is still your friend. And, yeah. you know, uh, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley, for that matter, are, like you said, they're consummate professionals. They have an idea how it should go. I've worked with, uh, I personally haven't worked with them, but I've worked with many people that have. And, and that, is a, that is a very common refrain that you just spoke to. And, and I think the cool thing about Gene is, although he can, uh, he can you know, get in a moment, have a moment, he's not too big of a superstar to come back and say when he didn't get it right. And that's, that's an important thing. Two things I want to say about him. Yeah. One, he did come over to me one day at the side there and said, you know, don't take any of this personally, but in my character, I can't just walk over here and go, oh, excuse me, Mr. Monitor. <laughs> but demons don't talk like that? What are you talking about? Demons don't talk like that. Don't talk but with blood in your mouth. <laughs> this is the real Gene Simmons people don't know. Yeah. Um, Kiss Aerosmith tour, we were out all year together. Yeah. And we had a day off in Boston on Thanksgiving and they rented a restaurant that was closed for a big crew thing. And we're all sitting there eating and whatnot and up pulls a cab and out comes Gene Simmons. Does a crew thing. That's very Took cool. Took a cab there. Yeah. And the, the Aerosmith guys were like, what in the hell is going on here? Yeah, you know? yeah. And he came in and just walked around and talked to everybody and thanked them and yeah. got in his cab and, you know. He's a very a personable time. fellow. I've actually met him multiple he times is. with his wife as well and she's a couple wonderful. of his kids. And uh, he's, he's a special cat, you know. He's, yeah. he, I think he told me I was a, uh, and I think, and then I went on and told six other guys this, but I was a strong and handsome fellow or something like that. There you like, go. The hell? <laughs> I'll take that to the bank. It's kind of a line, a line he likes to use, but yeah, he's just a special cat. And he tries to, you know, he tries to, uh, make it singular for the experience of the person in front of him, and, and yeah. to, his, to his great credit, and as entrepreneurial spirit goes, I mean, I, I was going to say, I mean, that well, whole band, I mean, those guys were businessmen. I mean, oh you know, God. they knew what they were doing right from the get go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you <laughs> know, I think he was raised up with a strong helping of musicals from his mom. You know, old uh, New York, New Jersey days, and uh, I guess when it used to be known as Heim. And, uh, you know, it's an honest, uh, he's got an honest love for production and, and drama and, but, yeah. and putting on a big show. I think he came by yeah. that real honestly. And, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a big part of who Kiss is yeah. and what they do. And, you know, their singular success is, uh, you know, you got to give it to them, man. That right, thing they right. just did, in, what was that, New Year's Eve where they went over the... Yeah, uh, the, yeah. I was going to say. It was crazy. I mean, right? Like, what the hell? They, they, they let off the most uh, pyro in any, I think, the world record pyro okay. show of all time. And... It's so who, kiss. who but those two yeah. would figure out yeah. how to do a show in the middle of the pandemic that's on right. New Year's Eve right. and do a pay-per-view and make millions of dollars? Who else? Gene Simmons, <laughs> Paul Stanley. They can't stop it. They just can't <laughs> that, stop it. No. Uh, 
uh, they never cease to amaze me. That's right. Yeah. No, you're not you wrong. Know? And, they're, and they're good people. And, you know, when I see them now, all they ever ask about is my kids, my family, right. what am I doing, yeah. you know, how are you doing? Yeah. And they take the time and, yeah. Yeah, no, no, they've... Uh, I will, I, you know, they, I owe a lot to them. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. That's fantastic. That's you know, because they, the, they gave me the chance on the Creatures Tour. I was out there as the assistant house guy helping back then there was no midi nothing all the sound effects were on cassettes they had a cue with a big pen yeah putting a player yeah. you know yeah. and i was helping the house engineer and uh they were going through monitor engineers like they always did yeah. and they wanted me to do it for whatever reason and i was like i'm scared of these guys i'm not doing it. You're not wrong. and eventually it came to a bus ride from dallas to houston it after we got on the bus to leave, and I was told you were doing it tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> and I did it for a long time. And, um, yeah, and I actually, well, a couple times ago when I saw Gene, I thanked him for that because it means a lot to me. I wouldn't be here without those guys. Wow. Sometimes you don't know when you need to be pushed into the into the mix, as it were. You know the metaphoric yeah. mix, and uh, yeah. and it's always going to feel a little quick sandy. And sometimes you need somebody from a slightly different angle to to push you in to to get your uh, your feet wet to know where yeah. you know where maybe you got a home at. And so and Gene Simmons is a one thing I think we could all say very fair and true is he knows how to pick talent. You know he knows he can tell whether it's a, if you got a character in there he knows how to pick. Well, talent. when I when I thanked him for that I said I said you know I wouldn't be here if you hadn't have pushed me the way you did. And he said well when people start they all need a good drill sergeant. Yeah. And you had one. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the Kiss Army. There you he go. He was my that. drill sergeant. Yeah, yeah, that's a, That's what he told me. As only Gene Simmons could put it, that is perfectly said. Incidentally, the uh, the Truth and Audio logo, the the way the reason why it looks like it looks the, the with the wings and everything. You ripped it off from Kiss. It's Kiss Army. Yeah. I, I want well, yeah. I, it was inspired by the fact that when I was 12, 13 years old, uh -huh. I was a member of the Kiss Army. Yeah. And I needed a patch, I needed a That was very formative stuff. Yeah. You yeah. know. I, I remember being super down yeah this is just pre-punk rock you know i kind of came out my identity started kind of with punk rock but early you know 80 81 82 but uh yeah i remember the kiss army very well you know rock and roll all night and all that and it was you know goddamn her live albums still one of my favorite live albums of all time to just uh, both of them uh, alive one and two just extraordinary shit and, and they started a lot of badasses like our, our friend robert's careers uh, you know, there's no way imagine. you could be in the mix for 50 years like this, give or take, and not have influenced many, many professionals that are still in the game today. And so, you know, hats off to Kiss and, and then the, the people that have worked under them. They're an extraordinary band. Um, you've worked with a lot of great bands, so, and it just, just goes without saying, there's no way I'm going to touch on it at all. We've already ran through quite a bit of time here, but I wanted to talk about an amazing one of my, you know, I, you mentioned earlier that you got a lot of musical influences and taste, I think, is what you were implying. I'm absolutely the same. We spent most of the day here listening to 70s singer-songwriter music, you know, the Hollies and uh, Seals and Crofts and all kinds of stuff. It's a big playlist we have. And it changes from day to day. It can be Porcupine <laughs> Tree and Slayer one day. and uh, you know. It, but we really move around in it. And one of our favorite stops is with the great Cool and the Gang. You know, they're just an extraordinary band. What was it like working live with those guys? Um, it was a different time. The band was great. Yeah, extraordinary players. It was, it was, it was, I'll be honest with you, it was awkward. Um, I wasn't really welcomed that much. A lot of us weren't. It was different. You know? But they were great, you know. Um, and I enjoy the horn thing. You know, I did a bunch of those bands. When I worked at the DB, we seemed to do a lot of those <clears throat> Blood fest. So we did Cool in the Gang. Some of the other ones, I mean, you see the list there. Yeah. The, and some of them I loved. Cool in the Gang, great band. Though, you know, Extraordinary too. players. You know, really, yeah. really talented. Great groove. You know, just the funk, just pop, 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 pop as a bass player. It's, it's just, it's mother's milk to me. I can't, you know, it's yeah. just, if, you, if it starts making your booty shake, you just got, you're in. You, they got you. You know, there's, there's nothing, Earth, Wind, and Fire, all those, the, the bands of that like. It's just right. extraordinary, exceptional music. Even, I got to even say Casey and the Sunshine Band. I, sure. I mean, what a, just, man, <laughs> this is extraordinary. Super, super fun. Still out there, too. Casey will never stop. He never's gonna stop. Casey's gonna have die in front of his keyboard. It's just, it's just yeah. what he does. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's he's just an extraordinary cat. Um, you got. I, we were talking, 
me and you were talking uh, a few days back, I guess it was, I don't know, relatively recently, and you were telling me about, I was mentioning that I was hanging out with Brad Maddox and Greg Price, and I think it was, somehow I think Scoville came up, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but you said you had a story about these three fellows. Tell me. Well, there, there are actually two stories. They're separate. Two Robert, Robert Scoville, he's out. Get him out of this for a second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll circle um, back. Yeah, we'll get back to Robert. Um, <laughs> You're well, not going to like start, that, but go well, ahead. Well, I'm already there, so let's just start with Robert. There, you, know, you, go. there you go. Uh, um, I, I uh, was doing REO Speedwagon. Mm -hmm. I did the High Infidelity, then the Good Trouble Tour. And oh, man, great tour. Shooting, shooting Star came out there at one point for a little bit mm -hmm. as the uh, support act. Robert was the monitor engineer in the drum tech. Nice. Wow. Nice. And, um, you know, we deep. sort of drifted apart. You know, he went the electric tech way, and I was at DV, then at Choco. And so we were kind of apart. Back then, rival sound company guys didn't talk to each other. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's not, today it seems like everybody's in this together. Back then it was. No, no. More, there was more rivalries, and, and that was going on. That's so true. I've known Robert for a long time, got a ton of respect for him, you know. I, I, I try to get on his uh, back lounge thing whenever I can. I do it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do it tomorrow because I promised him I'd do one. From actually, I think actually gonna, working. Yeah, you're a good man. I think I'm going to bring Bernie Broderick to the table on that one tomorrow. We're going to check in and just say, hey, so yeah. we'll see you there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Greg Price, Brad Maddox, and I all met each other at the same time. Man. Mm. It's a lot of talent yeah. in one at room. At the same time, never, didn't know each other at all. Um, I was the monitor engineer <clears throat> for Survivor from Chicago. Sure. And had had been for a while because um, of living in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And they were going out and um, for the Vital Signs album, and rehearsals happened. And I don't know how it came to be, but they hired Greg as the front of house engineer. Yeah. So that was the day I met Greg, you know. Um, Brad was the keyboard tech. <laughs> wow. You're going back in time now, boy. Wow. Uh, I got to write this stuff yeah, down. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and so we all met each other, um, you know, together. And since then, Greg and I have done a bunch together. We did Poison together, yeah. Yeah. Uh, some Starship stuff, uh, Kiss. Yeah. Um, but, he seems you know, to be particularly we, uh, proud of the poison yeah. work because he's got in his office, which, which you know, just over there, uh, he, yeah. he's got four or five of the poison trophies, as it were. Yeah, yeah and, and Brad and I have done a few things together, but always been friends and communicate. And now, I don't know, it's a lot, it's eight, nine months away, but we might work together next summer. We were supposed to work together a couple summers ago, and if he's able to still do, I don't know what he's schedule is going to look like if he'll be doing it or not but we're supposed to this is, a, this is a reference just let's not dig around it this is a reference to motley crew right yeah yeah i know he was disappointed that got postponed and i'm sure you were probably as well but yeah uh, we were talking as this was coming up to that moment and i was all ready for him to go out and i think at that point i was kind of reaching out to you as well yeah uh, that's and, first yeah, time we talked yeah and um and then that all happened, and you know, it's kind of a sad thing. Right. And, and of course, right at the same time, we were having a very close interaction with Rick Allen and the Def Leppard guys. So it was this kind of weird. And Bernie, Bernie's of him. building his studio at Rick's new house down in Carmel near my house, or at least my gal's house, there I spent a lot of time. And um, yeah, and, and then just the floor kind of fell out. So the bottom kind of went yeah. away. But mm -hmm. uh, you know we're all cats, and we all landed on our feet, and we'll 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 make our way back. And I know they will. It, it, well. You know, I think well, it's gonna happen. Yeah. You know, yeah, next yeah. summer, and I think yeah. it'll. You know, for those that are able to do it, it'll be a lot of fun. And I know Brad has a fast relationship with Def Leppard. Yes. I worked with Poison. I worked with Motley. Motley opened up for about a month of that Creatures tour, the yeah. last of it, the West Coast. It. Um, so yeah, it'll be. Uh, if we can all get together, it'll be fun. Well, again, a lot of talent in one place, man. Be blowing up a lot of shit. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is inevitable. Yes. <laughs> it's certainly yeah. on the motley part of that. So, I think. Quick story. I was at a, they were playing up in uh, Milwaukee, the crew were, <coughs> and they were playing an amphitheater there at the, the 
Summerfest or whatever. Sure. And a buddy of mine was, he said, come up with me. I, I need to go back and check the delay speakers on the outside of the of the amphitheater. We had to go across the catwalk, right? Uh -huh. I'm, I don't have a big affection for heights. So I get Not up there. Thing. I get up there. I'm walking across this, this, this walkway, and it's all open grade, of course, right? I get yeah. about 10 feet out there, and I go, uh, why don't you just go? You know, I'm yelling because the band's playing downstairs. Yeah. Why don't you just go? I'll go back. I turned around, man, and right at that moment, they set off the biggest hit of fucking pyro you ever saw in your life <laughs> and it shot right up through the freaking floor <laughs> and i'm like suck. man i was like five feet from taking that in the you know what yeah. rock and roll rock and roll rock baby and roll. that happened to me at a venom slayer concert and venom damn near well i was deaf till like five that morning i <laughs> fucking couldn't hear anything it was just shut me down the pyro just right in my face and yeah i'll never forget that that was it was traumatic, frankly. It was, it was not my favorite night in rock and roll. But, you know, it is, in fact, rock and roll. Yeah. Moving forward. Uh, thank you for sharing those stories with us. Yeah, These man. are people that I care a great deal about and uh, work oh, with they're daily. Both, they're all family. Great yeah. people. Yeah, and we're just right here in the house with them, so we, we're very lucky. To, they were here, both of them, today. And, uh, matter of fact, uh, Brad's going to do a little short catching up segment with us, and we'll talk about what his future holds here coming up. But... Um, uh, I wanted to uh, dig, dig in one more time, uh, beg your indulgence one more time to a band that, you know, in our business, we don't, we work where the, the speakers get rented to, where the work is. We go there. I don't, I, many times I worked in uh, situations where I wasn't necessarily familiar or fond of the particular stuff I was doing tended to grow on me, but you, you go where the work is. A band you work for that I enjoy a great deal and that I'm interested about. Uh, working with the Pixies, what was that like working with Black Francis, Frank Black, and, and that band? Did you have fun with them? Was it, what part of the career with uh, the Pixies were you out there with them? Pixies was in uh, 1990. Ah. So it was the Trump Le Monde tour. My favorite album. album. <laughs> My favorite album Pixies came album. Out. That's a great album. Planet um, of the Sound. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, it started off interesting. You know, I was the monitor person, yeah. and I took this monitor system to SIR in L.A., mm. get it all set up, crew, band comes in, starts playing. I know nothing about them. Yeah. I don't know anything about them. Yeah. Um, I watched this for, like, two days, and I thought, what in the hell did I get myself into? Yeah. These guys are terrible. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> what I thought. You know, <laughs> then, then about that's three awesome. days later, I came to realize, wait a minute. These guys are light years ahead of their time. That's correct. Especially and that it album. Was, it was yeah. one of the most fun things I've ever done. Yeah. It was a one band. truck, one truck tour. That's right. We did some, you know, we had a great time. Um, I saw you guys in Santa Cruz on you that know, show. Yeah, let me hear. Yeah. You know, one of my best memories ever happened on that tour over a course of time. My son, Stephen was born November 2nd, 1990. So this tour was in 91, actually. Um, and I had some pictures of them on my, the drawer to my EQ rack next to the monitor board. Yeah. And at the time, um, one of their biggest fans of that really thought they were the greatest was out with his band Tin Machine, oh, David God. Bowie. Sure, great. And those guys went out of their way to come to Pixie shows, you know? Yeah. And, and they came to three or four of them. And after the second, well, at the second time they were there, David asked me, he saw the pictures of my son. He's just a year old. And he said, is, is that your boy? And I said, yeah. And he, the, then he goes, he's so cute. Tell me about him. Uh, and from that point on, very sweet. Whenever they came, have you, what, has he grown? You got any new, you know, it was the weirdest thing. He didn't care about anything but this little kid, you know. Little human. Um, but from what I've understood, that's the only time I've ever met him, those three or four times. Um, I guess that's what he was like, you know. People Very say that. But that was David Bowie. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, he uh, always wanted to know about Steve. Now he's in the room next door waiting for me to get done. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> there you <laughs> On go. On tour with me. It's yeah. a full so, circle. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah, now, Dave, right. Dave Bowie was a one-of-a-kind guy, uh, particularly in that time of his life. I think when he kind of got past the Ziggy's and all that stuff in the late 70s and right. through the 80s. Even in uh, Let's Dance incarnation, you know, yeah. Nile Rodgers and all that, that was... Uh, that was a special time, but yeah, he got just got so centered, and he was just a sweet man. He was. I well, think, you know, something about David Bowie most people don't 
a lot of people don't know is um, that was the first thing that Stevie Ray Vaughan ever really did was play on that album. No shit. Yeah. I was not aware of that. Huh. Yeah. Wow. God, talk about a legend. He, talk play, about a he plays on a Dave Bowie album. Extraordinary. Well, he was seriously one of the best guitarists of his generation right. and, yeah. uh, you know, sorely missed both of them now that you mention it. Right. And this kind of goes back to that thing we talked about earlier. It's just people of a certain age, these, you know, people that uh, we grew up with uh, 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 idolizing, appreciating our friends, family members. Right. It's uh, natural um, things, natural processes are taking place and we'll have to learn to deal with certain loss and and uh, things like that that uh, we came up with people we admired and yeah. it's just a natural process of life you know it's Charlie, oh, yeah, Watts, I, man. I, Charlie Watts well, yeah, but yeah. It, it shocked me that uh, listen to Charlie Watts is an exceptional I never uh, exceptional person I never found him to be that intriguing of a drummer to me I had a very unique style but you know his contribution <laughs> to music was extraordinary but it's not unusual, and I don't mean this in any negative way, that he died at 80 years old. Sure. The man was right. 80. He lived 50 years in the spotlight, more than that. Actually, I, he's 30 years younger than I thought he was. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, of course he passed away. It was, it was remarkable that they're yeah. out still doing what they do, and I, to my hat's off to him. And I think, you know, uh, Charlie Watts was one of the classiest guys in rock and roll. I mean, yeah, sure. he's a unique individual. I'd, I've never seen a guy, you know, playing drums. Well, a few times I've seen different folks. But but he routinely would come out in a, in a, a tailored, you know, uh, yeah. uh, London beautifully cut suit. The guy was just, there was nobody like him. He was he was, yeah. he was one of he's a kind. A character, yeah. He carried himself. He was married to his high school, his art house, high school sweetheart his whole life. He's just a special cat. So. Yeah. Yeah, we will, we will, we miss him and his contribution to rock and roll. But yeah. you know what a life well lived. That's the way I see that. You know, life well lived. I got the goose arms right now because I mean it from my heart. You know, but yeah. but that is the progression of things. It's right. normal. This is normal. It's not weird at all. It's normal. Right. Yeah. And so we will see more of this. Unfortunately, again, we're men of a certain age, and it's uh, it is I think what all people that get to our age, the people that they grew up with and they loved and influence them they have to go away at some point we're learning that now yeah. yeah and it's just a thing listen robert it's i i i tell you buddy i had i was really coming at you for blood for bear <laughs> I, I had more baby but but we, it, it was such a good conversation it zapped up all this time i can't tell you how truly appreciative i am for you coming on the show this evening and sharing your time Great i history, know you're man. in the middle of you know rehearsals for your tour and we will hope that that tour goes extraordinarily well, that you have all the luck in the world, that you guys yeah. stay safe and healthy, that you, uh, you know, you continue to do the things that make you happy. You know, for a man, and I'm, I'm going to put you on blast right here, for a man of 64, you are shockingly <laughs> together, good-looking fella. Like, just, man, I would have never guessed that you were a 64-year-old man. But your history and the work you've done has uh, been a great contribution to rock and roll, and we appreciate well, you very much. Thank you for coming on our show this Well, year. like I told you, I have two idols. Dave Morgan and Greg Price, you know, got to yeah, keep you up got, with so you that. Got, you got, you got a little, you still got a little gas in the you engine. Know. If those, oh yeah, I'm, I'm six, seven years behind those. You're two. the young guy. So I'm good you're to go. Guy. Oh That's yeah, right. I'm the and, kid on the block there. <laughs> and you know, just, just uh, to add. Dave's out with with uh, Jackson and and, uh, and, James, uh, yeah. and James right now. Jackson Brown, James Taylor, and Greg's about to go out with Alice Cooper. And you're my friend, are not uh, dismissed. You still got a lot of work to do, and we will see you out on the road, and we'll have some fun with you. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Until then, you take very good care of yourself. Yep. Thanks so much for having me. This it was an absolute pleasure. It. Thank you so much, my brother. Take care, man. Have a good evening. Yep. Listen, I've been wanting to get him on the show for his career is always fascinating. I watch him from the sidelines through different, you know, decades, and you know, he's just touched so many bases and done so many cool things. And so it's it just a great treat to have him here. And I really appreciate him coming and sharing with the audience his experiences and the things he's done. I also want to say I appreciate you being here a great deal. You know, I love you more than anything. You're a dear, dear friend and a brother. I couldn't get it done without you. And I appreciate you very much. Thank you very much, man. I, I, I've been filling my cards with notes on, on things that Scovey did when he was young and things that Brad did when he was <laughs> young. Beat him up. Sooner or later, those conversations are coming up, man, and I'm going to say, yeah, keyboard needs patching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, no, we're going to work him over a little bit tomorrow. Oh, you know, yeah. he's just so, if he's watching this, he's so not looking oh, forward to Oh, he's not looking forward to us. He's, not, he's never going to look forward to two of us no, in the same room no, at the same time. No, this is bad time. news, man. Not going to be good. going to have some fun with our, our dear friend, Bob. Yeah. Uh, because he also loves it when I call him that, so. Yeah. Uh, Bobbert. <laughs> I mean, shut up back there. 
Jesus. Scoville. Rock and Roll Jesus is trying to get us in trouble. You'd be good back there, Rock and Roll Jesus. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Not helpful. Make some bread, Rock and Roll Jesus. <laughs> Put a Band-Aid on the some fish. Bombs. Listen, man, we do this every week. We do it for you. I'm telling you, this is... The labor of love, you guys. You got to understand, man. I am in here pushing out shows and rock and roll and scheduling and doing shit. I was doing this right up until 15 minutes before this show. We are working. Bernie's building new products and amazing things. You've heard us talk about it on the show. Yeah. You know, we're, we're working really hard. So when we come and do this, we plop ourselves down right before we get with our friends. We share an hour with you guys. We know you got a lot of choices and a lot of places you could be. You choose to be here. We appreciate it very, very much. This week was an exceptional show, and I enjoyed it a great deal. I hope you did yeah, as well. Too. Next week, we've got the one and only. He's, a, he's a, a legendary studio designer. It's Chris Cooper's coming in here. Christopher Cooper, come see us next week. Mikey's jumping the gun. <laughs> Is that our cue to shut up? <laughs> I think that was exactly what that was. Chris Cooper, next week, right here in that chair, we're going to probe his brain about the 20 different studios he set up. He's got a really unique take on things. He's a sweetheart of a guy. I think he'll be in the lounge with us tomorrow, probably, if I know uh, best and will. So, And if you guys, hey, if you're not doing nothing tomorrow at 420, show up at uh, Robert Scoville's lounge and let's let's just uh, bomb that thing and <laughs> get in there and smack him around a little bit. It'll be a lot of fun. He loves that. He so loves until it. then... You guys, be good. Behave yourselves. We'll see you next Thursday at 7. Good night.